This video will walk you through the writing process for your Compare and Contrast essay in Project 5. So remember, the writing process has six steps. Pre-writing, where you select your ideas. Planning, where you do research and outline. Drafting, which is the actual writing of your paper. Revision, where you check your organization and ideas. Editing and proofreading, where you look for style and grammar. And then lastly, submitting the final paper. In the first step of the writing process for your Compare and Contrast essay, you need to choose what you're going to write on. The prompt for this assignment says choose two or three occupations that interest you, researching them as needed, compare and contrast the required training, social benefits, financial rewards, availability, required experience, and personal appeal. And then you'll write a five paragraph essay on what you find. So you have three options for how you want to organize um, this paper uh, based upon the careers and what will be most useful for you. The first option that I recommend is to compare two jobs, perhaps your current job versus the job you hope to have once you earn your degree. Uh, the second option could be to compare two possible career choices that you'll have once you earn your degree at ORU. And then the third option is if you are still undecided about a major or thinking of changing your major, perhaps you want to compare a job that you might have with one major, perhaps music, versus another major, which might be ministry. So this would allow you to compare career options based upon two different degrees. So go ahead and pause this video and take some time to think about which careers or jobs you would like to uh, write on for this paper. Now that you've chosen the jobs you want to write on, consider the rhetorical situation, which, inclu which includes purpose. Uh, in this paper, that is to discover the job or career that is more suitable for you. Uh, also consider your readers. In this case, I want you to imagine that your readers are your classmates or possibly prospective students who are also interested in these careers. And then the third part of the rhetorical situation is the topic. So that is the two jobs that you have chosen to compare in this paper. Now, there's an extra step in the pre-writing stage that we did not have with our narrative essay, and that is to do research, right? The prompt gives you two sources that you can use, uh, which are listed right here, the Occupational Outlook Handbook and ONET online. All right, now you may use additional sources in this paper if you need to, but you uh, must make sure they are credible. So remember that you can go back to the critical reading chapter in Unit 1, which is Chapter 1, in the textbook. And if you go to page 11D, that will uh, give you the outline for how to evaluate sources. Now, before you do your research, you need to know what you're looking for. What are you reading these sources for? Now, the prompt gives you some ideas of how to compare these two jobs or careers. It points out required training, social benefits, financial rewards, availability, required experience, and personal appeal. You may use your own criteria and add to this. Perhaps um, certain jobs have certain types of scheduling or certain benefits. Um, you may use whatever criteria you want, but make sure that the criteria um, can be matched with both jobs. Now, before I let you loose on your research, I do want to point out that note taking is very important and it's a good idea to keep a log to help you uh, keep track of your sources, the information you find in them, quotes and ideas. So this is an example of what a log might look like. Here I will put the source. If I have time, I'll create the bibliographic citation for the source and put it here. But if I just want to put the title and author there for my own reference, that's okay. If I come across any quotes, I'm going to make note of them and make sure to put those exact words in quotation marks. This is key for later on when you're writing your paper. You may not remember if these are their words or your words. And a lot of accidental plagiarism happens at this stage where students do not pay careful attention when making their notes of what was their source's words versus their own words. Then I like to have a section in my log where I just write down ideas, maybe statistics or facts, things that I may not quote directly, but that I will still use in my paper and that I'll still have to cite. And this is separate from my own thoughts, which I might uh, then reflect when I'm done reading with the source. Maybe I'll make notes saying, hey, I can use this quote in this part of my paper, or this is how I think this source will help me. 
So now that you've gotten a brief walkthrough of the research, go ahead and pause this video, do your research, uh, make your note taking log or research log. And once you've finished, come back and I'll show you how to move on to the next stage of the writing process. Now that you've done your research and have gathered the information, look over that information and see what the similarities and differences are between these two jobs. You may want to make a table like the one below to help you get organized, where you have the features that are related to job one, features of job two, and then possibly you discover that there's some shared features between them. So go ahead and pause, get all of your notes and ideas organized, and come back and we'll write a thesis sentence. So now that you have a big picture of the differences and similarities between these two jobs, you're going to write your thesis statement, which will be the guiding statement of your whole paper. And below is a template that you can use as inspiration. So you would say something like, whereas blank and blank seem similar, they are different in several ways, and the differences are important because blank. So here you may want to state why these importances, um, why these differences are important to you. So go ahead, pause the video, and write your thesis statement. Now that you have the thesis statement, you need to work on organizing all of your notes into an outline that will support that thesis statement. What I recommend doing is looking at everything that you've gathered, and it's probably a bunch of different facts, statistics, information, and it's all kind of a jumble. Look at it and see if you can come up with three categories to organize it by. So for this paper, I've come up with examples of finances, work environment, and personal appeal as my examples of different categories. And under finances, I'm able to put information like cost of the education or training for this job, um, increased income from the education and training. Under work environment, I can talk about the shift schedule, maybe how I would work with others. Um, and then personal appeal, maybe the tasks of the job or benefits. So you can come up with whichever uh, categories you want and organize the information under these categories as you see fit. Now, in this stage, it's very important to pay attention for one thing. Under each um, area of support, you should have information for job B and job A. If at some point you realize I'm missing information for one of my jobs, under this category, you have three options. You either need to go do more research, you either remove this category from your paper and replace it with another, or explain that this aspect doesn't exist in this job. Perhaps um, there's some aspect of this job maybe in related to um, the tasks that just isn't applicable to the other job. And if that's true, that's okay, but you need to let the reader know so that they don't think that you just uh, forgot it. So go ahead and pause the video and take time to outline what will eventually be the body of your paper. Thinking how are you going to organize all of your information into at least three sections and then what evidence are you going to put under each section for um, both jobs. Now that you have your outline, writing your draft should be very easy. In fact, you may actually want to start with your body paragraphs because you've already come up with the outline of what you're going to say in each par paragraph like you've outlined um, here in this example. So just a quick reminder that a body paragraph needs to have three things, a topic sentence, support, which could be facts, examples, quotes, statistics, anything like that, and then a conclusion sentence that wraps up and says, this is what this information and evidence means in relation to my thesis. Now, if you need a refresher on body paragraphs, I recommend going back to unit three in our textbook and reviewing some of those tutorial videos you were given there. All right, so you can see here I have finances, work environment, personal appeal, which came from the outline that I created here, okay? Now, for the introduction, Real quickly, an introduction always has to state something interesting about the topic to grab the reader's attention. You need to establish why you're writing this paper. What is the issue? Um, how is resolving it important? And then you always, always need to provide your thesis at the end of your introduction paragraph. For your conclusion paragraph, restate the main point of your paper in different words. This could be your thesis reworded. And then you should also show the implication of what you've learned about these two jobs. And if you need a refresher on introduction or conclusion paragraphs, uh, go back to unit two and see section 4.3. 
All right, but before I let you loose to do your drafting, there is something we need to make note of, and that is your citations and your sources. Now would be a good time, if you've not already done it, to make your bibliographic citations for each of your sources. And as you're making these citations, I want to point out a couple things. You put works cited in the center of the page. Don't bold it, italicize it, or anything. And when you list the sources, you list them alphabetically by what comes first, not by the order you'll use them in your paper. You do not use bullet points or numbers. You use what's called a hanging indent, where the first line is flush with the margin and the following lines are indented. Do not do enter and return for the hanging indent. Instead, go to your paragraph options within your program and select hanging indent. If you need more help with citations, you can always check chapter 23 in our textbook or go to the um, other citation resources that I've given you in our um, course. For in-text citations, you're always going to use what comes first in the bibliographic citation, normally the author or maybe an abbreviated title. When you are citing an idea or a fact, you do not use quotation marks. The citation is just a way of showing the reader, hey, this knowledge or information didn't come from me, it came from someone else. When you are citing a quote, you do need to put quotation marks around all of the words that you borrowed from that source. And you want to make sure that you borrow accurately, word for word. Do not change anything in between the quotation marks. And then you would also put a citation at the end of that quote. So at this time, go ahead and pause the video and write your draft. Congratulations, you now have a draft of your paper. I know that feels really good. Now it's time for the revising process where you make sure that you've avoided some common mistakes. So the first place we want to check is our rhetorical situation, which basically means are we still on topic and is our purpose clear? So two questions you can ask yourself to check this are, does your introduction have a thesis statement? And is the purpose of your essay clear in your introduction? Now to check that, we always want to go and make sure um, that our paragraphs are matching our thesis. So that's the most important. Then you might ask yourself more questions on the paragraphs themselves. Does each body paragraph have a topic sentence? Is there unity and coherence in each body paragraph? Meaning, does all of the support that you put in that paragraph relate to the topic sentence? Does each body paragraph have a concluding sentence? And then lastly, are there transitions between ideas? That can be ideas within the paragraph and between uh, your paragraphs themselves. And if you need a refresher on how to revise a little more, I definitely recommend going back to Unit 2, Chapter 5, and going through the first uh, five sections of that chapter, which will guide you through the revision process in more detail. So go ahead and pause this video and go do your revision. All right, you just did your revision, which is focusing on global issues or big picture issues in your paper. Uh, editing and proofreading is dealing with the smaller issues, like mechanics. So here are some things to check, right? Sources, did you put quotation marks around words that you used from your sources? Do you include in-text citations for facts, ideas, and quotes? Uh, do you have a work cited page at the end of your paper? And then for mechanics, have you properly followed MLA format? And then as I'm going through your paper and grading it, I'm going to be making sure that your paper is free of capitalization and comma errors since we studied those in unit one. And then in this unit, you also learned how to fix comma splices, run-ons, and fragments. And I want to see your paper is free of those as well. Now, as a reminder, I recommend using Grammarly, um, which is a web app that you can use um, to help you find grammar mistakes. And you can also use Smart Thinking Tutoring to help you with more of the global issues or editing your paper if you need to. So go ahead, pause this video and proofread your paper. I recommend reading it out loud to yourself um, as a good tip. The last and final step, six, submitting your paper. You are now done. Go ahead and upload your file as a docx and put it in the Dropbox for Project 5.